let's discuss the problem f from today's division 4 round you can read it now or listen to my explanation in my explanation we have a table of size n by n and a ball of width 1 which is located in some cell of the table given in the input and goes in some diagonal direction in some in one of the four diagonal directions given also given in the input and it of course bounces of walls and of angles you need to calculate the minimal number of bounces it will make until it gets to some given point also given in the input and such bounce where it bounces of angle is counted as one bounce not two and the constraints were such small that you could actually just run a simulation move the ball always by one until it either gets into the desired cell or we made too many operations we can arrive into one cell from four different directions so it means that if we have made four times nm operations and still didn't reach the goal it means that we've stuck in the loop so if we've made more than four times nm operations and still didn't reach the goal we output negative one but what if the constraints were much larger what if n and m were up to one billion for example could we still solve such problem well i'll show you how our first step will be transform this problem to say that the ball has a width of zero so it's a point and we also cut one half of width from all the sides of the original table and so the ball will bounce like this but now we work with the table n minus one by m minus one and then we apply a very standard trick for such problems we reflect the table infinitely in all directions so let's reflect it by this wall then reflect it by this wall now when the ball bounces off wall we can imagine that it just continues going in the same direction but in the reflection of this table then it bounces off this wall it actually means that it bounced off this wall here but we just imagine that it continues to go in the different reflection let's show the desired goal with red it is reflected together with the whole table and four possible directions from which you can come to this goal will correspond to four different locations of the goal in relation to the corresponding reflection so in this reflection as well as this reflection this reflection and this reflection it would be closer to this angle yeah in this reflection as well as this it will be closer to the rightmost downmost angle in those two it will be closer to the topmost leftmost and in this it will be closer to the leftmost bottommost first of all let's say that the ball moves in the right down direction if it's not true we will just uh, reflect it a couple of times so we'll make the direction in which the ball moves right down diagonal then let's fix one of the four possible types of the reflection of our goal to which we want to arrive so suppose i fixed this type it means that i want to arrive to this point or to this point or to this point and so on i'll see what is the smallest time it takes to arrive into one of such reflections and i'll take the minimal time for all the four possible types of reflections now suppose that i fixed this type the goals of such type form a grid with shift by 2n to m 2n by x to m by y so if the x-axis starts here and the y-axis starts here let's say that x1 y1 is the initial coordinate of our ball and it moves according to such equation x1 plus t 
y1 plus t over t is the time that have passed since the beginning of the process. Suppose that one of the instances of my goal had the coordinates x2, y2. But all of the other instances will have such type of coordinates. x2 plus 2n times some a, integer a. a can be negative, comma y2 plus 2m times some b. So where a, b are just random integer numbers. So it means that I can take this and shift by 2n according to the x-axis and by 2m as much as I want according to the y-axis. And I want to find the smallest t which takes to hit one of such goals. So the smallest t which solves such system of equations. Let's rewrite it in terms of t. So let's just write it as an equation on a and b. So this is the equation that we get. And let's rewrite it. So let's denote 2n as an n with a circumflex and 2m as an m with a circumflex. And all this expression, let's just denote it as s. As you see, this is a standard Diophantine equation for a and b, which I've just made a video about. The link to this video will be in the description where I tell exactly how to solve this equation. But we also have additional constraints on a and b here. Namely, it can be expressed as saying that t must be greater or equal to zero. So if you express it in terms of a, you get such an equality. a larger or equal than x1 minus x2 over 2n. And of course, we can round it up as a must be integer. So we know that the solution to this equation has such form. It's some base solution a0, b0, but shifted k times by the shift. Where k is an arbitrary integer number, which can be negative. And n circumflex prime, m circumflex prime are n circumflex and m circumflex if you divide them both by the greatest common divisor. So let's insert this expression to this inequality to find the inequality for k. And we'll get a0 plus m circumflex prime k. So I'll just equal then this expression. So k is larger equal than As we are searching for the first moment in time when we hit our goal, we want to minimize t, thus we want to minimize a, thus we want to minimize k. So the minimal possible k for which this is true is equal to the lower boundary for k. Thus we have a formula for k, which we'll insert into that formula and that formula, and thus find the exact point in time and in space where we hit our goal. Now back to the original problem. Suppose I've considered all the four possible types of reflection and for each type I found the first moment in time when I hit the goal. But I still have to calculate the number of bounces that the ball made. First let's count the number of times it has bounced off the horizontal wall. Well, if the final point is here, then it have bounced zero times. If it's here, anywhere, yeah, then it 
has bounced one time, two times, and so on. But if it's somewhere on the border, we don't count this bounce. So the formula for the number of horizontal bounces is x minus 1 over n rounded down, where x is the x coordinate of the final point in this prolonged space where we hit the goal. And this is true except for the case when x is 0. But if the final goal, we hit the final goal on the coordinate 0, it means we have started here. Uh, so let's consider this case separately. Let's just initially check that if we start in the goal, then we output 0. Uh, but otherwise this formula is correct because for x's from 1 to n inclusively, the number of bounces is 0. For x's from n plus 1 to 2n inclusively, it's 1, and so on. Of course, the same logic applies for y. But now we have to also consider cases when we bounce into an end goal, because we will calculate such bounce two times, as crossing the horizontal wall and crossing the vertical wall. But we only need to count it once. So we would also need to subtract the amount of times that we hit an end goal while we were going from x1, y1 to x, y. But again, we only count the cases when x, y is not in the angle itself. So we only calculate those angles that we met strictly before x, y. And the final case work that we must do is to consider the case when we start in an angle, uh, do we have to count it or not? I claim that if we start in this angle, we don't have to count it. If we start in this angle and go down right, we don't have to count it. We don't have to count it. But for this angle, we do have to count it because on the first moment when we start the process, we will bounce off this angle. And that's basically it. So now let's just look at the implementation. So, first of all, here I have a function for the proper dividing and rounding up, which I've shown also in the previous video. And we need it because C rounds uh, negative numbers up and positive numbers down. If we want to manually round everything up, here, first of all, if the denominator is negative, I change the sign of both A, B. And if a is negative, then I just write a over b and it divides up. But if a is positive, I have to write like this to round up. Then I have the extended Euclid's algorithm, which I also explained in the previous video, so you can go watch it now. And, and here I have a function called solve, which basically solves this equation. So n and m are actually n circumflex and m circumflex. And then I have x1, y1, x2, y2, which grant all the needed information for counting s and for this inequality. Uh, so here I solve the Diophantine equation. I, again, I explained it in the previous video. And at this point, a and b contain some basic solution. And then I take this formula. For k. Then I calculate the point where I hit the goal. And actually, I return the point on a plane where I will hit the goal. So here I read everything. I subtract 1 from n and m. As I said in the beginning, I also shift the coordinates so they start from 0. Then I check if I'm already in the goal from the beginning. This is a separate case. I output 0. And then, if I move not down, but up, then I reflect vertically. If I move not right, but left, then I reflect horizontally both points. Then this closest will be the closest point on a plane, where I will hit the goal. Here I consider the four types of reflections. Uh, for each reflection, there is like a base instance of it. 
those are the four base instances of each type of reflection and the coordinates are x2 y2 um, x2 2m minus y2 2n minus x2 y2 and 2n minus x2 2m minus y2 so here i change x2 to 2n minus x2 and back and i also do the same with y and for all possible types of reflection i find the closest point in time when i hit such type of reflection of the goal and i take the one of them which has the minimal x coordinate obviously the y coordinate will also be minimal then i check if i haven't found any i output negative one otherwise i count the number of horizontal bounces vertical bounces and then i want to subtract all the bounces from an angle here i consider all the four possible angles and i know that i will hit an angle of every type at most once because if i hit it twice it means i'm already stuck in the loop yeah so for each angle i just want to see will i hit it before i hit the goal in order to do that i run the same function but i pass the coordinates of the angle as my goal and as you remember for all the angles except for the rightmost bottommost angle i have to not count the starting point if it is in the angle so if my angle is not the rightmost bottommost angle i start from the next point not from the beginning but from the next point from the beginning then using the same function i find the first point in space where i hit such angle and i compare it to the point where i hit the goal if it's less, it means it, it was strictly earlier. It means that I have calculated this angle twice. So to calculate it only once, I need to subtract one from the answer. And then I output the answer. And as you see, it, it really works, surprisingly. Uh, that's it for today. I remind you that I give private lessons on competitive programming. If you are interested, contact me on Telegram. Goodbye.